In today's video, I got the Smoke Daddy Pellet Pro 1190 and we're gonna do an unboxing and an assembly on it. Hey, this is Ricer from Dead Broke Barbecue Wisconsin and welcome back to the channel. But if you're new here, we try to help you enhance and amplify your backyard barbecue fun. Now I can't be a fib or a liar. Doing this assembly was pretty dang easy. Now it took a little bit longer to put it together, but that's because we had one big heck of a rain delay. So grab your toolbox and your spectacles, Bill. It's time to start amplifying your backyard barbecue fun. Who's your smoke daddy? All right, so smoke daddy's here. Now we gotta get this thing put together. The Stork has delivered us a new baby. We got the Pellet Pro 1190 from Smoke Daddy. Now in full disclosure, Smoke Daddy sent me the 1190 so I can do a complete and honest review using it. And today Jake and I are gonna put this hog together and we're gonna do a quick little review on this pellet grill. All right, so what am I waiting for? Let's get this box opened up. That was actually kind of cool. Start cutting up the straps. Now it came in off the truck, good. So I was happy about that. So I was able to actually accept the delivery. Always keep your packing slip. And like on all my assemblies, I go ahead and just cut the box down. Watch out for these staples. Ta-da! So we got our warranty and owner's manual. Now not everyone is gonna get one of these, but they sent me a banner. Thank you, Dan, I really appreciate it. So let's see what we got in this box. So this is one of Smoke Daddy's accessories. It's called the Heavy D. This is actually a true stick burning diffuser that you can go ahead and put right above your fire pot. You take off this end piece and you'll see that there's actually some wood in here. And that's gonna give you a lot more smoke flavor. It just sits right above the fire pot. For whatever reason, I opened it up on the wrong side again. So muscles, come on over, let's get this turned around. All right, I'm gonna open up the lid. Ooh, that's heavy. That's a solid piece right there. We got a cover. Yeah, it must be a little side shelf. We got our handle. In this box, you're gonna have your casters and your legs. We got a top stainless steel rack. Stainless steel. We've got our bottom shelf, three individual stainless steel racks. We got our heat deflector. We got our grease pail in our stack and the heat deflector that goes right above the fire pot. My guess is when you're using the Heavy D that that other deflector will come out. Strip this down a little bit more. All right, muscles, let's go ahead and just close this lid up lightly and then we're gonna put this back on its back. Pick it up and just rotate it over. It's pretty light. And I guess I should check and see if there's anything in the hopper. Yep, got our safety guard and one probe. Now we're gonna go ahead and put the legs on, but I wanna mention to you before you get too far that inside your stack is where your hardware is. And they provide you with a box and an Allen wrench, so it's easier for you to not have to look for stuff to put it together. And the instructions say to keep a piece of styrofoam because you're gonna put this underneath it to prop it up so the legs are easier to put on. So it's pretty simple, we'll just pick it up. <laughs> That'll work. You can always adjust it later. So to make this a little easier for a guy, Start on the side. Just make sure that you keep that leg and you do the side part. You don't have to work as hard. And it's starting to rain. So I gotta hurry up. I'm just gonna finger tighten these for right now. I'm just gonna turn this right on top because it's gonna be even easier to put this together. I think this is what they meant by propping it up. It'll be easier to put the legs on. We got a piece back here too. So let's get to town here before it starts raining. This one turned in a little bit. And of course it's raining. Get this one in. And we'll just spin that on, just finger tight. Of course it's gotta rain, pull us in a little bit. So after that minor rain delay, let's go ahead and start putting these legs on. Now you'll see that with this bracket, there's only one side or the other that this one can go on because if you try to line up the bracket, it's just gonna spin around in a circle. So make sure that you got it where the wheels are running parallel with the bottom here. Get that on. And we'll go over on this side. This is pretty easy assembly so far. Not much to it. The smoke daddy already having the hopper assembled. Pretty gravy. We gotta hurry up because there might be more storms coming here too, so. Now let's get this last one on. Okay, so here's an assembly tip. Make sure that when you're putting these casters on, on both of them, and I didn't notice until I did it the other way because of the shelf. You're gonna wanna make sure that that hole is facing out 
don't have it this way or you ain't gonna be able to put on your bottom rack. If you see like this, that's how it's gotta be. Not a big fan of do-overs. I didn't wanna have to redo it all by myself, so I'm making Jake help out. Better than drilling a hole. <laughs> this thing gotta go in the house and get dried off. Don't turn it on, it'll wreck it. So now we're gonna put our shelf on it and there is some self tamped nuts at the end here. So just make sure when you're putting it on though, you have it like this, but the flat side is on that side or you're gonna have this set up a little goofy. And you just try to get them started a little bit. Get them in finger tight. Just gotta wiggle a little bit up against the steel. It'll turn for the most part. Just wanna make sure that you're not cross threaded. So now when you're at this point, you can go ahead and start locking things down and tighten things up. Takes a while. I'm glad they supply this wrench, but it would have been easier <laughs> if I just went in the toolbox and got the right size. So I'm going to start tightening up these casters onto the frame. Yeah, I said the heck with the wrench and we went and got a socket. All right, here we go. Flip it over. All right, now we're gonna go ahead and put on our side shelf and I'm gonna let this young man hold on to it. And he'll just stick it through and not wiggle. Then we'll put this outside one on. You know, everybody's all wet and sticky now. It's all humid. And you're gonna use a small Allen to tighten this up along with your wrench. All right, so now I'm gonna go ahead and put on my handle. Now, when you take this off, you'll see that this has got kind of like a little collar washer. So we'll go ahead and put our bolt through. Put this on and just start. Turn her in a little bit. Again, we're gonna do this finger tight. So we'll do the same thing with this one. Just put that up. Get that turned in. Now that we got them finger tight, just go ahead and give them a couple turns. And I will tell you that I'll come back and give these after the first time I use it. I'll go through and make sure that I give all these nuts a quarter turn again. Now I'm gonna go ahead and put on my stack and this came with these bolts mounted on there already. So you just gotta take them off real quick. Put them on your handy shelf. Line that up correctly. Get this finger tight also. And just get this nice and snug. All right, so now you have your hood that you're gonna put on and this has an adjustment so you can have it as high or low as you want. It's set here, that's how I'm gonna start it out with. But who knows, after I've run this a couple times, maybe I gotta adjust the cap. Or just leave it as is, we'll find out. And that's got just a threaded top on here. Just spin it in until she stops. Okay, so that's the nuts and bolts of the assembly. That's it, there's only a couple little things to do. But before I go ahead and finish the complete assembly of the 1190, today's video is sponsored by Wines Still Sold Out. And over at WTSO, they get wines across the globe. And they're getting new bottles daily. And they got super cool shopping options like Last Chance Wines, Weekly Tasting, and premium selections. And my favorite thing is that they'll ship it right to your door. You don't even have to wear a mask when you go on the internet to buy wine these days. And if you use my promo code BBQ20, you can save yourself $10 on any purchase of $50 or more. And that promo code lasts until December 31st, 2020. So what are you waiting for? Head over to WTSO's website and get your own bottle of wine for your backyard barbecue Fun. All right, so I gotta hurry up and crack into this bottle of wine. I mean, assemblies are always rough. All this talking's got my thirst in emergency mode. All right, so now it's the moment that we've all been waiting for. Hey, 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 pretty good pop on this red. Now this bottle was part of the weekly tasting of the American Way. And because it's an American red blend, you gotta drink it out of a red Solo cup. Mmm. There's just something about these American Red Blends. It's got all of the flavors that you're looking for. Thanks Wine Still Sold Out for sending me a bottle of the Forward Kid. I really appreciate it. And it's a lifesaver after all the talking that I've been doing and the rain got on us. I mean, come on. Gotta have a little bit of wine to brighten up the day. So now all we have left is to put the remaining parts into the cooking chamber. We start out with this heat deflector. All right, so you'll see these couple notches and this isn't the heavy D deflector, but this is just your standard one. And that fits right on like that. So now we're gonna go ahead and put our heat deflector in. This is on the right hand side. Let's just 
like that. And you'll see right here is the lip, so you're just going to want to hook that right on that lip like that. And you'll see down here, it's open right into your grease catch. Now we got our three stainless steel racks and we go ahead and put them in. And the rack, remember the rods are up top. And the last thing to go in is the top shelf. And this lip is in the back. Goes in real simple. All right, so that's what it looks like when it's all put together. And you can see there's some pretty solid craftsmanship in this thing. I mean, all the spot welds look good on the hood and it is stainless, so that's a good thing. But it's a really nice looking cooker for sure. Now I do like that this is actually removable. It's a pretty nice little grate. Goes in here just for protection, so that's kind of nice. But if you have to get in there and clean something out, you can. Now it is a PID controller and that's super cool. Look at, it has its own receptacle. You can plug in your signals or your electric knife, charge up your cell phone because you can see there's some USB plugs right there too. That's pretty smart thinking. Now how you drain your pellets is you're just gonna pull this out and you can see that opens it up to a hole and they'll all come right out then. Now the casters are pretty decent rubber coated that's nice for rolling around now let's face it the side shelf that's pretty tiny but you know you can always set something on there like your signals or one of your temperature probes now it would be nice if it did come with a front shelf but you can always go ahead and use your hopper lid to set your cutting board on now my first impression of the smoke daddy 1190 it's a pretty solid piece of equipment now I haven't ran it yet but the craftsmanship is pretty good and the assembly was pretty easy. The only thing, the instructions, they could use just a little bit more. Guys like myself, I like a little bit more pictures along with it. So just a couple more pictures to show you how to line things up, that helped. But honestly, it's pretty easy to put together. The only mistake that I made, because I really wasn't thinking of the shelf, is that I didn't put those caster legs on correctly. Big deal. But that is something that they could maybe show you a little bit better on the diagram. Now I can read a schematic drawing. That's not the hard part, but when it's only one picture for the whole pieces and parts that go on there, Smoke Daddy could break that down a little bit for your normal buyer because they're gonna kind of look at this and think, well, where do I go now? Thanks again, Smoke Daddy, for sending me the 1190. I'm really excited to have my first pellet grill PID controller. I'm used to the old style algorithm type of controllers and I'll be honest with you they're not very good this PID I should have a lot more control on my cooks so in the next video I'm gonna do the burn off and that way we can start messing with that controller and see how this thing performs and if you're interested in finding out more about smoke daddy check the description below there's a link in there that'll run you right to their website if you like this video give it a thumbs up and become a subscriber Turn on that notification bell because you don't want to miss my next video. I mean, I got some new cookers coming in. Why the heck would you want to miss that part? But I appreciate you watching and I'll see you in the next video. <laughs> Spectacles. Comes up with that crap. So it doesn't look like... Uh... No, it's pretty simple. This hard to rain or is it just gonna come? I don't care if it sprinkles, but it's just this is too hard to anything. It looks like 40 gonna break and then fix back up. These are wrong. Mm -hmm. The holes need to point in towards the center. This wind is just a fright. It says you got about 45 minutes and it's gonna storm. Is it? Okay. Then screw it. We'll, I'll do it another day.